Hello everyone and welcome to my crash course Git version control system. In this course you will learn everything you really need to know about Git to be professional. Don't worry, it's easy and it's not a lot to learn as you may think. And in this lecture I will explain you what is the Git and why you really need it. First of all, Git version control system is free and open source. You can download source code of it, update it, do whatever you want. It's open source and free. Don't need to pay to anyone. It's developed originally by Linus Torvalds. This guy developed originally uh, Linux as well. And it was released first time in 2005. Let's assume you're a developer who write code. Doesn't matter which code, any, any, any program code or script code, anything. Sometimes you need to manage versions of your code. So how do you manage it without Git? Because you didn't know it, what, what is it? So you, you have your folder with your uh, files, your source code. For example, you see, you, you have first file, my project version 1.1 uh, py, it's Python file. It's code which is working fine. You decide this is my version one, working fine. Don't, no one need to touch it. Next, Later, you want to update it, make some changes, update, you know, some enhancements, some, you know, new features. So in order to not break the version of one, you just make it basically do cloning your code, basically doing duplicate of your file uh, and just making changes on the new file. And you don't touch never uh, the first file because it's, it's golden code. It's working fine. You don't need, no one need to touch it. Any additional features, it will be additional version, for example, version 1.1. After it, you want to up update or fix some bugs, so you will uh, make this version 1.2 and so on. Basically, you creating duplicates. So anytime you can go back to any version, to previous version. Managing this way, what is bad? Why it's really not uh, super professional to manage it like this? First, what if it's many files? You see, my project is only one file. Basically, I'm managing, just I'm just updating my file. Yeah, I'm just creating copy of one file. What if my project is like thousands of files? So you, you will uh, duplicate all, all thousand files, basically create like sub uh, folder, 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 folder. It's really bad. What if you need to know which line exactly was changed in file number three and uh, which line was changed in, in file number 933? You cannot know it. You just, because you duplicated all the files and just updated, make the changes, everything working, okay, decide where this is a new version, that's all. You don't know exactly which changes was done and when and by who. Also, when you duplicate uh, all these files, uh, basically the storage allocation is growing. So basically you're creating duplicate and you just, you're locating more and more uh, disk space. But yeah, only current time, just disk space, it's not an issue. It's very cheap, so you don't need to worry about this. But what if many developers want to work on this project and not only you, all these files located in your laptop, on your computer. What if another guys want to work together no, just, you know, you're working one week, after it you just copy all these files to your peer, he working one week, copying back to you. No, many, many developers want to work on the same project on the same time. So you need some centralized place for this. Also, you need to know which developer changing which file. So it will be no any conflict or if it will be conflict, so you will know which uh, update you need to take, you know, of developer number one or developer number two. So with version control system Git, Everything is much easier. So let's decide this. This is a managed version with the Git. So with the Git, you don't need many golden copies for each, like basically golden copy for each of the new version. You just need only one golden copy, the latest one, let's say it. Let's say it, it's the latest version. And you will have some folder called .git. And what is .git is basically database of the versions. It will store all your changes, which line was changed by who and when. So, and it's super easy to go back to any of this version. Basically, one command, it will go back to any of this version. And what is the version? Version, it's, it's any, any, any small change. Basically, you decide what is the versions. For example, you add new files, it can be a version. You add three more files, it can be also a version. You, you delete a few files, it also can be a version. You update uh, two files and, and add another file. And you decide, okay, this is a version. How many changes, number of the changes to define the versions. And it's, it's very easy to go back to any of it. And in this database, you will see again, as I told you, who did which change in which file, which line he changed, or which character he changed in which line. 
As you see right now, all this code is located on our disk. You see a disk H folder my source here. It's good, but what will happen if your laptop or this disk is going to die, completely die, and you will not able to restore it, recover the, uh, your files. You invested a lot of the hours into this project. This is your intellectual property. You need to store it in remote location. First, in order uh, to avoid uh, loss of the disk, and the second, so many developers will able to work on the same project. So for this, we have remote repository. Location where you will store your source code remotely and not on your laptop. So we're going back here, uh, my folder. You see, you don't know where is it right now. It's not on your disk. We have same database. And we're just placing all this stuff in the remote repository. You will know everything what you, what you really need about remote repositories, how to work from your laptop with remote repositories. Don't worry, it will be next tutorials. So we have our Git remote repository, we have our project, and we have already files. How did, did all this stuff created? Like, who created? So we have one developer, let's say. He created the version one, after it he updated, pushed the version two, after it updated the code again and pushed version three, after it updated the code again and pushed version four and so on, so on, so on. Next, we have another developer who can take, who can clone basically all this repository, include all the versions, make his changes, updates, and push and create the new version, for example, version five. And after it, developer, can just take these changes basically he will pull the changes he will pull this version who will have which copy so in remo remote repository we will have our centralized location for the repository for the code each developer will have their own copy of all of this repository the cloned repository basically they will make changes in their own repository locally and only after they finish their work, they will push the changes to the remote repository. So any other, uh, any other developers can take this code. And also, by the way, uh, there are some rules, like you can push directly, but you can, you know, make kind of pull request to ask other developers just to just, can, can you take a look on my code if it's okay that I did these changes, if it's okay to make this version five, you know, the next version. We will go through it, uh, don't worry, we, I will show you how we're making this uh, pull request, like how you merge the code, uh, how you uh, ask for the review, and it looks really great, you know, it looks really beautiful, because it's showing you exact files you change it, it's ex showing you exact line you updated, and showing you even the characters you updated, and it's super easy, again, it's, it's really easy, you will see how it's easy. So stay with me, you will learn it on the next lectures. Okay, git remote repository, where can I place my code? So where can I find the location to place my uh, code to make it public to everyone? Or maybe not public, just private, so only people who I want will able to access my uh, repository. There's many options in internet, many of them completely free, on professional level and completely free. And one of them is GitHub. And the, in this course, we, I will show you how to open account in GitHub, how to put your repository, how to clone it, how to push, how to make a pull request, how to merge code. Basically, everything you really need. There's other solutions, for example, Bitbucket, also a very uh, popular uh, service for the Git repositories. Other solution is GitLab. By the way, it's, you can even launch your repository in your data centers. Basically, just downloading this software, it's also free, and launching uh, this GitLab uh, server in your own uh, data center, for example, on your own servers. Solution for the Git remote repository also available uh, for many public uh, cloud provider. Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure, provide Azure repos, it's called. On AWS, it, go, it calls uh, AWS code commit, and in Google Cloud Platform, it's called source repositories. I can tell you, uh, I will not recommend to use uh, these services. Just frankly, it, they're not super nice. I know they created it really ugly. Maybe one of the best is the repos, but code commits one of the few probably worst than a uh, source repository also. It's really, really bad. It's not user friendly. It's, it's, it's really bad. The best is GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, the best solutions. In this course, we will focus on the GitHub. 
and there's many others. If you start thinking there's a lot of learn, like Git, uh, you know, probably will be a lot of the commands we need to, uh, you need to remember, no, trust me, trust me, no. You don't need to know all Git commands, you don't need to be professional. It will be less than 20 commands that you really need to know, that's all. And from this less than 20, you're really using like uh, maybe six, five commands uh, on the daily basis, that's all. Just all the rest is once, you know, once you're using them, just, you know, you, you forgot them. <laughs> if you want to learn everything about Git, there is a free, completely free book on the official website of the Git. Okay, let's go here, right, Git. Here you go, this is the official website. Uh, and here you see Pro Git, free book in PDF, you can download it. You have it. It's uh, how many pages here? 506 pages. Trust me, you don't need all this stuff. It's a lot. It's just, uh, I, I, I didn't read it. Uh, you know, I, 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 I cannot read it. It's just, it's, it's a lot. It's really, 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 really a lot. Just forget, just don't read it. If you really need, I don't know. I don't know if you really any day will need to know everything about Git. Uh, also, by the way, it's available, this book available in many, many, many languages. Many, many languages. You see here, if English is your native language and just, you know, you prefer to read the book on another language, yeah, here you go, you have many, many, many of them. Uh, all right. So that's it, guys. Don't worry, don't panic. You don't need to know everything. It's crash course. I am professional solution architect. I worked as DevOps cloud engineers many years. I'm writing a lot of the infrastructure as a code, Python, scripting code. And I don't know all these Git commands which you have in the book. You really need less than 20 commands to know, to be professional, to say I know Git well. And this is what you will be at the end of this course. So I will see you in the next lecture where we're going to install Git on your laptop.